Uh, a few months ago, I had the opportunity to interview one of, one of your colleagues, uh, John Sabo, who's the head of the Los Angeles Public Library System. And uh, one of the programs that they're launching there is, um, is, a, is a high school. Uh, they're, they're, they're creating an accredited high school diploma program inside the library, uh, which is something he had come from the Atlanta Fulton County Library System, where they had had a lot of success with help with librarians helping GED students <coughs> complete their their GEDs. Um, and so he, he, in Los Angeles, he's taking that one step further and actually turning it into a, a fully accredited high school where you get a real diploma. Um, and, and so those are some of the kinds of, of programs that I've, I'm seeing libraries create where, um, you know, he was talking about how the, the way he, that he was able to sell this is that basically they, in Atlanta, they had taken on from maybe 100 GED completions per year to over 550. And the, the argument there when you're in a, in a, in a space where there's, um, you know, a funding crunch, um, being able to tell the county commissioners, we've basically given you a, an entire high school here. Five, over 550 graduates it amounts to an entire, entire high school. Uh, so those are some of the kinds of things that I'm hearing about from, from, uh, from library systems uh, where they're, they're, they are trying to innovate. Um, so I guess I was just curious to hear you know, any, any other, any other in, in really innovative programming that you guys are hearing about as well. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious what you think as, a, as the leader of a, of a high school. I'm still thinking about the high school thing. Yeah. I, you know, helping helping students finish their their diploma in the sense of a GED makes perfect sense for libraries. Uh -huh. um, as somebody who runs a high school, there's a whole lot that goes into you know the education of kids from um, whatever age 13 well, or 14. This is mostly for parents. adult learners. No, I follow. Yeah. But but is it's you know so much goes into the care, and obviously in my case it's a, a very expensive private high school and so forth. So it's more elaborate, and this has got a very different mission. But um, that you know that's that's certainly pushing the edge of what libraries ought to do is actually run a high school. Certainly the completion part makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. I guess I, I like the models where libraries are connecting to forms of learning that are happening for kids so that um, the, uh, there's a theory that I'm personal to of connected learning and the, um, it's something that's being used <laughs> greatly in the Chicago Public Library as an example in their new media space where you've got kids have you know a school and they have other places that they do their, their primary learning but they connect very effectively into spaces that the library has that attracts them there and noting that a lot of the learning kids are doing is informal and it's in interstitial moments on these devices and if librarians can be a part of of that process, uh, I think that can save kids' lives, literally. Um, actually, running a high school start to finish, I'll have to look more into whether that, that <laughs> makes all the most sense for my Well, I think the idea, and, and you, maybe you'll agree more with this, is, yeah. is that the actual learning is taking place online, but the library is yeah. there to help make those connections to the online learning experience. I totally get that. And you know, actually, the idea of having hybrid spaces and learning spaces where you're connecting in real space to what's going on online, I think, is a great, is a great model. I just think that in, at least when you think of what you're trying to accomplish in high school, particularly for kids of an age, it's so much about moral and, and the kind of connections mm -hmm. that kids are making to one another. Um, and it seems that if librarians want to take that on and, and <laughs> actually play that role, it could work. It's just probably not exactly what most librarians have trained themselves to do. And I would think it's actually way trickier with adult learners of various ages than it is <laughs> as compared to uh, to kids. But maybe the point is I'm having the perfect be the enemy of the good in my head and that this is a great <laughs> thing for a bunch of people, so go for it. Yeah. I, have a, I have a sort of a, a question as well. Um, so John, you, know, you mentioned John Saban. One of the things that he's doing also in Los Angeles is working on uh, with community organizations and with the city on citizenship yes. uh, uh, services. Uh, and part of it is because of the need and the population that is in, in Los Angeles. And part of it, I think, is um, the, the, as I understand it from other people, maybe not from John himself, but the need for libraries to find other ways of supporting themselves, right? Exactly. Uh, and so maybe some of the new services and some of the new models and the innovation has to do with, yes, there is uh, an increase in the use of libraries, but I don't know if there's... Uh, 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 a parallel increase in the support, the financial support uh, for libraries. And so libraries have to um, start looking at new models for revenue. Uh, and, um, and Not, not just revenue, I would right. say, but, but quantifying mm -hmm. right. their impact on the right. community. Right. Uh, that was one of the things that John and I talked about was that, you know, that those kinds of numbers that 
politicians really like numbers like that. You know, you, when you can go and say, here's, here, you know, here's what I did, and, I, and, it, and it equaled this number of people that well, so we helped. So you're we sitting helped. next to one of the great success stories of this in the country, and Brian <laughs> Bannon, who has turned the, the city of Chicago around in this way, right? You've found a way to really align what you're doing with the city's mission and, and have a, a great story there. Yeah, I think that we actually worked with um, Mission Measurement, which I think is in the house, uh, to, to help us do that. We, we spent some time looking at um, sort of the core mission of, of the library. And, 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 and while our mission hasn't changed, we've, we thought it was important to be using the library to make the city um, stronger. And I think that's really what libraries are, you know, public libraries are, are about, um, you know, fundamentally access and uh, helping people connect, um, you know, to, to perform democracy. But we're also about, um, making our cities smarter, more competitive, and hopefully sustainable. And that's really how we realigned the library, to so look at the three different areas that were most important to the city um, and, 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 and figure out how the library against our mission can help the city stronger. So we looked at learning, um, supporting uh, the economic ecosystem, as well as um, strengthening our neighborhood assets, um, our, our neighborhoods um, you know, in the city. You know, back to your question on what libraries are doing sort of in the experimental um, places. You know, one of the things I think many people don't realize uh, is in this connected world how few people are actually connected. So we've got a little large portion of us, I'm sure everybody in this room has multiple devices that are connecting to the internet, you know, lots of opportunities to, you know, to email, to learn, to, you know, to use all these great tools, but there is still a large portion of people in the U.S. that don't have it. And in Chicago we have certain neighborhoods where, um, you know, 70 percent of the people have um, limited or no access to, um, the, you know, the, the leading knowledge of the day and they, you know, they can't apply for jobs, they can't um, you know, get benefits. And so the library has a really important role in that space. And so actually one of the things um, that, we've, that, that we're experimenting with in Chicago is how we can begin to help people uh, bring the internet home and, um, and also be exposed to some of the, um, the, the free and low cost programs that would allow them to sustain that activity. So we'll, we'll be launching later this year a program that allows you to check out uh, devices, so hotspots, plus uh, a laptop, so you can begin to take those things home. But in, in that case, we're, it's, in, it's less about the technology and actually more about the support that we're providing to people to understand what the programs out there that exist to help them sustain it, how to help them uh, you know, build the skills they need, um, mm -hmm. and then to help them bring it home so they can experiment at home. 